So if we could start with your, your name then. Eddie Marnell. What happened, Eddie, back in 1984 that led to you ending up in jail? Well, basically, um, it started off with an attack by British shipbuilders, or probably the British government, on the shipbuilding industry. Camel Edge was earmarked for something like half the workforce being made compulsory redundancy. We seen this as, obviously, the end product would have, been, would have meant that the yard would have closed, although at the time British shipbuilders and the government both denied this. So um, we thought we would take action. Uh, we took action by virtue of the fact that we occupied the yard and the two remaining vessels in the yard, which was a Type 42 destroyer and a Jacob accommodation rig. And this went on for several months. We didn't reach any headway with management. They weren't prepared to move one way or another. So it eventually, uh, management went to Manchester Crown Court and obtained a, a writ um, banning us from the yard based on an ancient law of trespass. Uh, and in the event of us not vacating the yard, that we were to be uh, incarcerated for a month in prison. And that's, in fact, what I understand, that's in fact what happened. Yeah. I yeah. mean, did you feel that that was justified, that they the, the had a reason for, for, for pursuing you in that way? No, because, I mean, we were on official strike and we were fighting for not only the jobs of ourselves and our um, ancestors, and, or sorry, uh, children and what have you, but we were also fighting for the rest of British shipbuilders and their jobs. And since then it's been proved, obviously, that British shipbuilders have been decimated. We don't have yards to cope with what our naval fleet, for a start, uh, requires. So we were icing the um, action we took. And unfortunately, I've got to say it again, the likes of, the likes of Frank Field, who campaigned along with the Back to Work Committee, they were totally wrong. I have tried, under every conceivable uh, method under the Freedom of Information Act to get um, the answers to some questions. One of the answers being, um, you know, who made the decision to send us to jail? Um, who made the decision, or was there, made a, was there a decision made to close the yard? Since the death of Thatcher, I've uh, obtained some confidential cabinet papers which state in July 1984, the cabinet discussion, Camel Aird's closure. Okay, well, uh, what about for you personally, the, the kind of the impact since then in the years, because we're now talking 30 years have passed since then. I understand there was an impact, not just on, on at the time, but on your rights following that when it comes to your pension and so forth. What has happened there and what's been the impact on, on your life and the life of your other, of the workers? you well, work with? Um, personally, I've felt that uh, this was a, an injustice that needed writing. And I've campaigned virtually on my own for 22 years, but with the full backing of the GMB for the last eight, and especially um, the, the local regional secretary, Paul McCarthy, and the national se uh, general secretary, Paul Kenny. They've backed me to the hills. And it's only through them, really, that we've ended up getting uh, to the European Parliament because I have met two English or British Prime Ministers and a Justice Minister who promised the world and actually did nothing. You've, you've presented your case today to the European Parliament. What has been your line of argument that you've, you've told to, to MEPs here, given that the Petitions Committee in the European Parliament deals with European law? Yeah, well we believe that it's a fundamental basic um, uh, rights issue in that all our rights uh, went out the window when when we were on um, official strike we were ending up in a top security prison on the top security wing you know banged up for 23 hours a day treated worse than murderers that was the case we were actually on the same wing as murderers you know uh, this should never have been the case, and why? 
after so many years and so many, uh, shall I say, uh, representations to Prime Ministers, Freedom of Information, you name it, why have we got no answers other than the one that states that Camel Earth was going to close? Do you have um, any hope that Europe will help you? Do you think that given you say that you feel this is a, a case of European fundamental law being broken, do you feel that it's a case where Europe might be able to help? Well, put it this way, we have no option. We've tried every conceivable method under UK law and what have you, and I just find it very strange that when you write to the likes of the Cabinet Office, the police forces, the Met, special branch, you name it, every conceivable um, recommendation that or petition I've asked for has come back no information available. Well, that just can't be true. 37 men went to jail for a month. 37 men were put on this top security prison and yet there's no information available. I don't think so. Let's sum up then. What is it that you'd like the EU to, to, to do? If you can put it in, into one answer, what you think the EU might be able to do to help? Well, apart from the fact that I think that People who were on strike, uh, not just the 37. There was other people who were sacked for supporting the strike, including two apprentices. Now, seven of the men have died uh, who went to prison, but one of the apprentices has also died as well. I'd like to see some sort of recompense for all those who, in my opinion, were robbed of the redundancy. But I'd also like to see a situation where uh, the British government holds its hands up and says, yes, we did wrong and we are sorry.